Welcome uh, to the a little late nine o'clock hangout. I had to watch a speech on immigration. If anybody comes in, this hangout will only run till 11 o'clock and then we're done. Welcome the new viewer. Uh, type something in the box. We got off to a late start. My dinner was just uh, just got done. Now we got four viewers, three viewers. Get back to the um, stream up. It'll tell you what's going on. Please get those webcams working. Or type or type in the uh, Q and A. Four viewers now. I'm hoping somebody will come on with a webcam to keep you entertained while I eat. <laughs> Three viewers. This is the new airplane. I'm working on the paint job. It looks pretty good. I think. I'm going to ink it up probably tomorrow and we'll start shooting the clear. Hit that webcam. <clears throat> in and out, in and out. Hit the webcam. Let's uh, get the hangout going. I'm eating dinner. I don't believe you guys want to see me eat dinner. Type in the chat box, I can see the chat. But it looks pretty good. <clears throat> okay, here's what we got going on here. Been working on this thing today. And uh, I came the silver stripes on it.
and I got it set out. We're going to change. I'm going to change out this uh, thinner for carbon fiber. See if we can get that set up because it's considerably lighter. We're going getting it down to 52 ounces so far. Changed out the fuel tank. There we go, Chris. I see you. What do you think? I like your silver. Yeah, I, I couldn't think, you know, I didn't think black would look very good. Yeah, you needed something brighter. So I put the silver on there. And uh, I thought you were in bed. I was, but the ribs were falling. But the what? The ribs were falling. Uh -huh. I, didn't want to, I didn't want to go a night without doing something on my airplane. Well, I mean, you didn't have to get up to to chat, but I, you know, I I was on here. I was eating. I, I wanted to see Donald Trump's speech on immigration, so I didn't get on till oh, probably fifteen minutes to ten, nine forty-five, and then I sat and ate here for about. 20 minutes and people were in and out in and out but nobody would talk oh yeah yeah i just i, I gotta drive my wife and daughter to the airport tomorrow oh i got the uh the mold is uh i molded that piece see yeah and uh as soon as it's dry Probably tomorrow or the next day, we'll take it off and send it out there. I'm going to uh, put the propeller, the head, the drive washer, and the back plate in that box with it, and send me that send me that fuel tank. Yeah, I'll do that. I'm a uh, I'm by myself for the next couple of days, so I should have time to get that done. I got to mail about five people stuff, so I'll just make a big, a nice trip to the. The post office. You got my address? Um, is it in the Pampa directory? No, probably not. All right, give me a second. I'll get something to write it down. I'll send it to you via text. Okay, yeah, do that. It'll be better. I, you know, I don't give that shit out over the internet. So I'll send that to you. Oh, you're not anywhere near where you could weigh that thing, are you? Wait, what thing? The oh, tank. the tank? No. No, it's got fuel in it. I need to drain it. Got a little bit of residual fuel in there. I'll get out for you. But you say you think it's an ounce and a quarter, right? Either that or um, three quarters of an ounce. I don't remember. It's something close to that. We'll say ounce and a quarter. That way it's on the on air on the high side. So let's see what this turd is going to weigh. I didn't I haven't added any weight really. Uh, with ink and trim. I gotta paint the uh, numbers and stuff on the bottom yet. I'm gonna get that done tomorrow. Is the top done? Yeah, except for inking the panel lines. Okay. 5210. 5210. Got any idea how much chip weight you got in yours? I have a half an ounce. 5210. Did you hear me? I have a half ounce. Yeah. I don't know, but sometimes you miss words because of the 
the internet. So. And then we'll say ounce 1.25 on that. And uh, I think two ounces is clear, but we might get away with an ounce and a half. I would just do two ounces. My my take apart fly is just as good as my fifty six ouncer and it it's almost five ounces or four ounces heavier. So we got uh, five, eight, nine. So we got two, four, five, fifty five, forty five. If that, if that tank is an ounce and a quarter with two ounces of clear and a half ounce of tip weight. So I, I'd be happy with that. Yeah, that'll be that'll be within a half ounce. It's a half ounce lighter than mine was. See, the, the thing is, I, I, I don't dare get very much more heavy because it'll start getting tail heavy. Well, you sound like you got a lot of ballast you can work with, so that'll help. Well, I can I can swap out this spinner too, because this spinner is two ounces, and uh, this carbon spinner is 0.7, so that would take out an ounce and three, one point three, five one, four. That'd be 54 ounces if I if I change the spinner up. <clears throat> I wish it was 50 ounces. Let me let me answer this. This Tom is keep keeps ringing me. You got to get into the uh, to that link. There's something wrong with your computer over there. You still there, Chris? Yeah. How long? Uh, how long are they keeping Google Hangout alive? Till September. Okay. But but it's still gonna be. I'll still have it on on YouTube. Yeah, we could all Skype too if we wanted to do Skype. How how could we uh, Skype all these people and get it uploaded to uh, YouTube? Oh yeah, yeah. You can't load it to YouTube. Yeah, that wouldn't work. So, so the thing is, uh, all I, you know, these hangouts, I can have 10 people, and I think they're going to get it bigger. Um, you so know, September starts. What? September starts tomorrow. Yeah, I don't know what day though. Okay. Let me move this over here. Well, it sure looks good, Sparky. I mean, I can see a lot of a lot of similarities in what you did with mine, and I think it's a pretty cool rendition of it. I got rid of the ducktail. I tell you that. Hello. Hey you there. Yeah, I got the camera off though for some reason. It went off. There we are. I moved the computer so I could sit here and and look at everything. Oh yeah. Uh, saying it, yeah. 
It looks pretty good. I hope it. Yes. I hope it flies as good as mine did. I do too. I don't have as much work in mine as you you have in yours. Yeah. As much time I I only got, you know, a month in it. And most of that has been painting. I can I can build them faster than I can paint them. Oh yeah, I know. I got I got my nice little uh, ribs getting closer here. Feeling... Are they sanded or just cut? Oh, they're just cut. I haven't done anything since I last talked to you. Yeah, I talked to Hunt today. It's the uh, he told me what the name of it something foam building system or some crap. I don't remember. I think it. I think it's for, foam for foam form building system. Something like that, yeah. He said that uh, people were getting confused about lost foam. They would call up and say, "We only get one wing out of it." No, you get as many as you want. Oh yeah. You know, they they thought it was lost, but it wasn't. I don't know. Yeah. I think everybody knows about Lost Foam Wing and the control line. Where I, he does do a lot of RC. So. Yeah, that's where you can make money. Yeah. You certainly are not going to make any money from control line guys. Nope. Because we're the crazy people that sit here and cut these things out. It's been... <laughs> thousands of hours you know and you know I mean, we probably spend about a hundred percent more money in our wood because we buy so much of it and we buy the best and we throw away probably i throw away a ton of wood <laughs> you know it's just like uh, i don't throw it away I'm, i give it away or you know to rc yeah, guys I <laughs> yeah i mean i don't I, I give it to people in the clubs and stuff but YouTube like models, which is a train outfit, is going to start getting my my balsa wood now. Because you know, them buildings that they're building, they don't fly, so they don't. Have, it doesn't. They can use twenty pound wood. Yeah, they don't fly. That's pretty good. You always know when you have good balsa wood when you don't have to work to cut it. You know. It doesn't split, you know, there's no effort. It just works nicely. If it's, it's pretty good stuff. The whiter it is and the softer it is, the lighter it is. The, the whiter? White, yeah. 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 <clears throat> we used to have this place when I was a kid called Ed's Kavina Hobby. And I guess it's still in existence. And it was on Glendora. I think it was Glendora, but we, we would ride our bicycles, and it was an all-day trip there to to ride your bicycle. And Ed, the guy who owned it, used to get so mad because we'd go in there into the balsa in the balsa drawer, and then touch every piece of wood, and then I would take my fingernail and put a fingernail mark in it to see if it was soft. <laughs> Yeah, he said, you damn kids, and you only buy one or two sticks and spend all day. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. yeah. I was probably the, the last of the going to the hobby shop on your bike generation because there is a hobby shop in Sandwich where I grew up. And uh, the, and the guy was a control line pilot. His name was Jerry Ru no, His name is Jerry Rischke. And I would ride my bike there in the morning. It would take me about 45 minutes to get there. It wasn't like that long, but I wouldn't leave the entire day. I'd sit there waiting for them to open and I would just probably drive the, you know, drive them nuts. I just ask them <laughs> a gajillion questions as like a middle schooler and talk about the half a plane. I was going to build the fly at the one half a contest that I could go to every year. 
you know, <laughs> I just had to drive them crazy. But I'll, I'll never forget, he used to have videos playing in the, uh, why do I have two LH3s? One is not an LH3, one is an LH2. Yeah. I wrote one wrong. Okay, this has got to be a two. This one's bigger. Um, anyway, he had windy videos playing in there, and I saw Dan Banjok fly for the first time. And he, oh, he's the first person I ever had seen that could actually fly. And I was blown away that he could hit a four-foot bottom <laughs> or five-foot bottom. I was like, planes aren't planes can't do that. I didn't believe it. And then the next time I saw it in real life was at SIG. And Todd, Todd Lee flew, and I saw it in real life. Blew my mind. I remember you when you were a kid at SIG. Yeah. What was I flying? Do you remember? No. God, been many years ago. I flew a Pathfinder at first, and then I eventually got a uh, um. A Vector 40. I had two Vector 40s, and then I... It was, the, it was the Pathfinder days. Oh, that was, I was a beginner then. <laughs> um, Roland McDonald was there when you okay. were there. Is that Bob's dad? Yeah. Yeah, I don't... I didn't know who anybody was then. <laughs> I mean, I had to be 11 or something. But I remember... Um, Cinna beat me in beginner. I do remember that. I got third, and he got he got first. And after the competition, I went and tried to do. I could do everything in the pattern, but the clover. So I went out in the field when everybody was done and tried to do the clover for the first time. And Stick. oh man, I stuck it straight in. <laughs> the third corn and the third start loop. Wham! <laughs> I was feeling so. Yeah. I got a plan, a set of plans from Senna. He had a uh, a force. Okay. A profile force, a big one. And I still got the plans around here, so I never did build it. But I, I didn't know who he was, but he ended up sending those to me. Yeah. He, uh, I, I um, will never forget, uh, well, Keith, uh, no. Now Shug owns it, but I remember seeing that Ares for the first time, that gray Ares. Yeah. Keith Stamberg built, and I went, that's a pretty airplane. <laughs> I didn't know who Billy was either at that time, so that, that was kind of cool. It's kind of cool to look at, look back at things, you know. I remember that airplane made an impression on me when I was 11. I miss, I miss Sig, the SIG contest. Yeah, that was a good contest. Did you camp when you were down there? Yep, yep. Yeah, I always camped when I went there. I, I always camped right next to, uh, oh, Linda Schutte, or Brenda Schutte. Yeah. Yeah, cause it, yeah, I thought that was the greatest thing in the world. You, you, you were woken up by model airplanes. That was that was amazing. Did I ever tell you about the first time I drove up the SIG? No. Man, I was I, I probably told this story to, on the internet like twelve times now, but I'll never forget because we were driving to Montezuma and it was five and a half hours or whatever, and um, we were coming in at sunset, you know, and we're going up and down those hills, and I I just remember coming up a hill and seeing all like there's a line of like five or six airplanes flying a pattern like flying patterns down the runway right into like like the sun was coming down and i told my dad this is what heaven must be like because <laughs> i was like 11 like oh my gosh i, I never had seen so many control line airplanes at the same time <laughs> i don't remember your dad yeah he he helped me i mean he flew but he was Definitely just, you know, helping me out. He had a he had a really nice sick chipmunk. He's still flying? 
Um, he flies real airplanes. He's a pilot for American. He doesn't fly models much. I mean, he's got a bunch of airplanes still, but um, he doesn't fly. He comes out and coaches me before the Nats still. He likes doing that. My next uh, ordeal is tomorrow I'll finish this. Air. I'm going to put the first coat to clear on it. And as it's drying, I'm going to work on this continental behind me now that I got this molded. and I'm going to try to finish up that continental. I got to deliver it next month. And then I'll work on uh, my other four paint jobs. And I got to choose whether to build another one of these or a chipmunk. But, uh, Your scale guy? Yeah, my scale airplane. Cause well, why don't you fly, fly that and see if you like it? If you, you know, like it, then decide. Oh, yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to fly it next month or, yeah. you know, this month, September. So I need that tank ASAP. I'll I'll make sure I mail it this weekend. I'm gonna pressure check to make sure it's fine. I mean, I'm a thousand, I'm like almost ninety nine percent sure it's all right. Doesn't matter whether it is or not. I'll JD weld it. Yeah, I mean it. There's hardly anything wrong with the air. I just haven't checked it since. You know that was the plane that you know hit the bird. This mag, head, mag head weighs 19 grams. See it? Well, I'm, I know it's lighter. Bill said that if you weigh the, if you uh, put the mag parts on it, he said that uh, it's exactly one ounce heavier than our light and 65s we're using. Oh. Six grams on the uh, on the drive washer, and. I'll show you this. See this? I th I think this is for seventy five. I'm not sure, but I think it is. I just got a a, a broken ear. If you JD weld that ear and then redrill it out, you should be able to use it. Oh Nine the. Uh, oh okay, so the ear's still there. It's just cracked. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get that repaired. I think it's for 75. I I really 75 or 65, but I think it's for 75. I know the head's for 75 because it's a big mama. Well, I mean, even if it is for the 65, I mean, this this airplane I'm building now is going to have a 65 in it. I'm going to make it so that I can put the 75 in it, but I don't think this thing thin wing is going to like that. <laughs> I think it's going to be too much thrust. Well, uh, that thin wing has to be extremely light. It should be low 50s. Low, low 50s. Yeah. Well, Bill's, the one I flew at the team trials was 58. So, we'll see. I'm really just trying to make that airplane again. So, we, have a, we can just put modern power in it. That's all I'm trying to do. I mean... I'm hoping it flies good enough that I can fly it at the Nats. I just want to see if it's how much different it is than the other, the wing we're doing right now. Well, what's wrong with the wing that we're doing now? Nothing. Yeah, it turns faster, but it's not quite as stable. So I'm trying to find a middle ground, you know? You think that's the wing, huh? The only difference. It well, the, stab, the stab's an inch and a half different. Yeah. I don't think that has too much to do with it. They both balance in the same spot? Yeah, I mean, I've had the CG all over the place on the, the wing you have. It doesn't make that much difference. I really do think it has to do with the... Uh, the thickness of the tips. I think what it does, it'll stall faster being thinner like this, but it wants to go straighter 
because it's you know it's just like having a board out there you know a straight flat board well but, but either is i mean if i had to fly my take apart again i'd fly that at the national you know i won't even question um Right now, I'm just trying to build up a stable. Yeah. Because my wife's pregnant with our second kid, so now I'm going to have even less time to build. <laughs> so I got nine months to build as many airplanes as I can. The reason why, the reason why I I'm uh, switched, you know, that red airplane that I got is basically Thunderbolt numbers. Yeah. You know, it's a geobolt wing. It, it, it's basically a thunderbolt with a thin fuselage. Yeah. And it's 58 ounces, but I made the nose too long, and it turns so damn slow. I mean, it's really directional. It's locked. It locks in solid. Yeah. But it just takes too much to get it going. <sighs> you got to really crank on the handle and make it make it go and the reason why i made it so long is i was building electric airplanes before and electric airplanes you can stretch your nose out a foot because there's no weight there yeah and i ended up making the nose on that 11 inches long what motor do you have in it super tiger 60. 58 ounces yeah you should get you should get like a oh you can't put a pipe in it though. I could if I cut open the bottom, but see I don't I don't have any money. That's the whole deal. Yeah. Well I mean if you got a if you got a, a, a really strong forty that only weighed like eight and a half ounces, it wouldn't make a difference. You know? It would it it would immediately at least make that airplane flyable. And if you could just get enough, you know, just nitro it up enough. I don't know. I, that'd be worth a shot. Nah, I'm just just building oh. another one. The next one I'm going to shorten the nose up on. Well, it depends on how this one flies. Yeah, yeah. It's either shorten the nose or lengthen the tail. <laughs> I think I'm missing a half rib. Yeah, I'm glad I put the silver on this. This looks uh, much better, I think. Yeah, probably lighten it up. I mean, maybe it, I want to see that thing in the light because it's hard to tell that it's orange. What, does it look like I got two different colors of red on it? Yeah, it look. It honestly looks like it. Yeah, I mean, you can at certain angles you can see the orange, like the way the light's hitting that flap right there. It looks orange. But when there's no light hidden on it, it looks pretty red. It looks orange in, in, on my screen. Yeah, it must just be my iPad. I think I'm missing one. I'm missing one rib. Are you in your garage now? No, I'm in my basement. I don't have to run the air conditioning because my air, I have central air in here. So if I can do stuff in the house, I try to do that. So I don't have to turn on my, you know, wall unit. You remember that discussion that people had about the Junar ribs having like those little half ribs? Yeah. That I'm going to have to do that on my, not this at wing, but my next wing. That all Why? that is, all he's doing is conserving the airfoil a little bit, right? And because it's take apart, I had to make the spar straight, and so it, when it hits the tips, it hits it on the front of the airfoil, so that where the sheeting has to end. So I'm gonna just, <laughs> I'm just gonna put little half ribs on there. It's gonna be a pain. I don't like them. Yeah, well, I'm gonna have to do it. 
the reason I don't like them, you're talking about the ribs behind the spar, right? Yeah, yeah. The reason I don't like them is the covering always pokes through on those things back there. Billy says round them off, but I've rounded them off before, and it doesn't, it, to me, it doesn't do anything. It's, you know, it still pokes through right there. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to definitely round them out, but. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Billy's got the magic touch for everything. You know, I. He's extremely. He's what? Extremely patient. The guy, the guy does not stop. I've never seen anybody just go all the time. Like, he's always some new technology all the time. Like right now, we're working on heads in PA fifty one. We're not gonna fly PA fifty ones, but it was an experiment that he started that he never finished, and he thought about it and he wanted to keep doing it. <laughs> you know, he's just it double bubbled heads. You know, he's just playing. He just never stops. He's got vortex generators on everything, testing it. He's all over the place. Vortex generator, all right. I ain't sold on rat turds. Yeah, they're, they're ugly, but they work. Are you? You're not. You're not the one that put the strings on it, are you? And the camera. Oh yeah, that was me. That that yeah. didn't show Jack. <laughs> I know. It's it's kind of like when I was working at Whitman Harley Davidson, this one guy said, well, we can make our own flow bench. I said, how? He said, well, we'll get a vacuum with a toilet paper roll and put the toilet paper roll on the, on the uh, exhaust port and uh, put a piece, you know, tape a piece of toilet paper over the roll and then blow the vacuum through it. <laughs> I said, what does that do? He said, well, if the toilet paper flow, you know, goes out straight or whatever, you got more flow ice, you're crazy. You yeah, know, ridiculous. Yeah, it, they did make, they do make a difference. They they help a few things. They're, they're not miracle workers, but they do help. Well, I don't think I'll be playing with them. Yeah, I mean, it, they're so... I mean, it's like a 4% or a 3% advantage. <laughs> you know, it's not that big of a deal. I'm definitely missing a one half rib. I don't have a right half rib. H1. Hunt seems to think that the way to go is to build these airplanes lost foam fully sheeted. Yeah. I, don't see, I don't see how that could be an advantage. I almost, I almost did the, the a take apart with wings that could interchange between those two methods, just to see if it was lighter. Because he's, I mean, I don't know if it. The things that it, it would help is is this the right panel? Okay, so this no, this is the center section. I'll show my. My, 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 the labor of my, uh, the goods of my labor here. You have two nights? Yeah, two nights. And you still got to sand them. Still got to sand them. <laughs> there, it's everything. I did, I did yesterday shells, they're drying the leading edge, so I'm getting somewhere. I mean, I can build the entire wing in a, in a two days after these are done. Oh, yeah. When I was doing the laser cut ribs for the P50, or P47, or I was building a wing a day, or a wing a week, like shipping it out the door. So who was, who was doing the laser cutting on those ribs? Uh, Eric Rule. What'd that cost per set? It was about $150 per kit once you got the, the mold kit done. Uh, the the cost in that thing was the development of it. I mean, it was crazy. I mean, I barely made my money back. <laughs> I 
but I never got one. No, I know. I it it was just too much effort, man. You didn't want one. <laughs> I know. Uh, I you know, like I sold my Thunderbolt anyway. Yeah. The I, only I way gotta... that the only way that airplane's gonna be what I want is if I can build one at fifty three ounces like Billy's got. Yeah. <laughs> you can do it. I mean I have a Thunderbolt. Here, I'll show you. Let's see if they got one in here. This one, how do I switch the camera? What the heck? That was not what I wanted. Turn your camera off. I'm trying to just turn it around. There we go. All right. Let me show you here. Uh, so here's my downstairs. So this is my drafting table where I draw everything. So is it not in focus? There we go. So this is the new play I'm working on. It's kind of I'm just changing the rudder to make it the peregrine. <laughs> and then this is my my neck. This is my take apart ship. I built I built this piece, uh, this spar to slide into it. Um, that's removable. It weighs an ounce. It's a little heavier than I wanted it to, but it's just like an I beam that goes through the center to beef up the center. I don't know if I'm going to put it in not yet. I haven't decided. And this is the Warwich bedroom. This is where Billy stays when he's here. That's Mark's impact. I'm making him a new stab. But, and then here's half my lost foam cradles. And then there's about four more underneath the bed. <laughs> and then this is a type, um, the prototype for the take apart system. I sold this to uh, a, a local guy, and then this is a the prototype P47, ready to cover right now with everything done. It's 23 and a half ounces. It's lighter than the one I. Uh, it's lighter than my one piece at this point, and my one piece came out uh, 56 and a half. So you could get pretty close. But. Looks like we did. What are you going to do with it? What? What are you going to do with it? I sold them. I don't. I and the guy just hasn't. Um, he hasn't picked it up. I didn't. I didn't want to do a P forty seven. I don't like the way the bottom it looks in the maneuvers. It never looks like it's flat. You know what I mean? It's it's a guppy. What'd you oh, say? You it's a guppy. You didn't notice what I did to my airplane. Look at no. the profile. Look at the profile of mine. Do you notice anything different about mine than yours? It's completely flat at the bottom. No. Guppy. It's tapered up. I I cut three quarters of an inch off the tail post at the back so it tapers uphill oh mine does too mine but it's only like i think mine tapers about a half inch well the drawings that you sent me was straight yeah the bottom is but the mold tapers up well i cut the bottom the fuselage sides up three quarters of an inch oh okay yeah, I, the the original Junar is completely flat. Like the bottom block stays flat the whole way. Yeah, I got the plan to that, and and it was it's about that wide all the way back. Yeah, it's a big. Uh, well, you got to remember that plane was two different airplanes. It got stripped twice. It used to be the Hungarian bull with a four stroke, and then he he stripped it and did something else, and then it was a USA one for a little bit. And then it was stripped again and became the Junar. Because he didn't, you know, he wanted something a little more classical looking because he thought the judges would like that more. And he wanted to put a pipe in it. <laughs> the plane had three different engines in it. Three different coverings. So he built three different fuselages for it? Well, the top blocks. The wing and the stab are all the same. Which basically... 
this airplane here is a USA one. Yeah. I mean, besides, the, besides the thick tips, they are. Yep. It's like a bigger stab. The USA one only has like a like a twenty five inch stab or something. Well, I'm not sure that that big it's, stab it's like, is really worth all that much. The only reason why I put it on there is because Billy said I'm going to put the big one on mine. Yeah, one of mine. Um, one has a big step, one doesn't. The two, the new ones I'm building. And he, just, he said yesterday, he said, I've never had a stab too big, but I've had a stab too heavy. <laughs> so I'm trying not to make it heavy. That's what I'm really trying to do. You tell him about mine? Yeah, he didn't believe you. What? That, it, that it's a solid piece. <laughs> that it's lighter and it, well it is <laughs> well the one the one that you showed me it's 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 all cut out right that two and a quarter one yeah, yeah that's a cut out one but this one here is a solid piece oh, okay. and it, that's... it's lighter than the built up one what what is that a three quarter or is that a quarter the five, the five eighths okay What was that one before you put it in the airplane? Um, with paper and dope and everything on it, it was two and three quarter ounces, and then I put it in the airplane. Okay. Well, that's heavier than mine. Yeah, but it's an ounce lighter than the built-up one. But, Okay. So mine's the lightest then, at two and a quarter with the tissue on it. Yeah, it's, it's light. It's the same oh, okay. same size as this one. Uh, I think it's twenty-seven and a half. I don't know what this one is. I yeah, I think it's. I, I think that's the smaller stab. Mine or your yours? Mine's the smaller stab a little bit. Um, this one is 30 inches. Yeah, it's bigger than mine. By a lot. I'm only following you guys as lead. <laughs> you know, Billy said you need the big one. Oh, well, the only reason I'm not doing the big one is because I've already done that. And I want to build this other one as close to the yellow one as possible. The uh, the take apart is going to have a 29 in it, so I I don't think it makes a difference. I think that as long as it's light, it doesn't make a difference. Well, here here's the deal. I got a bigger one on this. It's 30 inches, but my tail moment's only 16 inches long. If I had an 18 inch tail moment, I could use one that was, you know, 25 inches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, then you got all that time for it to go around the corner, you know? Yeah, yeah. So all I can do is, uh, I mean, this, this airplane looks like yours, but it's not really your airplane, you know? The, the numbers are different. Yeah. Well, I think you, I think you went the right way with the changes. Well, we're going to see. I mean, if it flies good, I'll build another one as close to this one as I can. If not, I'll try to change some things depending on how it flies. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, if, if if Ron and I were still hanging out together, he would have me building this nose at eight and, eight and three quarters. <laughs> and then I'd be adding nose weight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think ten and a quarter is the sweet spot. That's what I'm doing. And I, I'm putting a shaft extension just like yours. I think the only reason your nail your your nose heavy is because you have a heavy motor. And so if we can just get well, we can get nose weight out of that by the other things, you're gonna be alright. Well, I don't have any clear on this yet either. So 
but that's only two ounces over the total airplane. I don't know if the, it'll shift the CG back or not. Now, there's no fuel tank in this now. There's, I don't have a fuel tank in it. And this is where you say yours balances right there. And remember, there's no fuel tank. Well, that wasn't as fast as yesterday. Well, yeah, the fuel tank does. The fuel tank weighs two. Well, wait a minute. Put it right there. The fuel tank weighs two and a half ounces that I have in it. There we go. It's right where you, yours balances. Yeah. Let's see what happens when you get clear on there. If, if I get the uh, carbon fiber fuel tank and I change this spinner up to this lighter spinner, which is an ounce and a half lighter than this one, even though it's dorky looking, or I might put the one that I made, I was looking at smooth on to see if I get some harder plastic and I might mold a, a couple more of these in harder plastic. <clears throat> but they're only 20 grams as opposed to, you know, two ounces. Uh, then I got a tongue muffler on here, which is, you know, it's light. But let's say that I get it real light on the front end and I end up tail heavy, I can put my tube muff, my art animation tube muffler on that I want to use. I mean, I got plenty of options. Yeah, yeah, you'll get it right. Yeah. What, uh, do you have the ability to make carbon spinners? Yeah, I even got Wendy's laid up molds here. Oh, really? I need to make a custom two and a half inch carbon spinner. Let me see what, let me see what this one is here. Wendy mold. This is a Wendy Seafire mold. And it is, I don't think it's two and a half, I think it's two and a quarter. Well, I need a really short stubby. Spinner. What? I need to make a really short stubby spinner that goes on a, like a Hawker Tempest. And this is two and a quarter. I mean, I could make them. I probably could figure it out. Ain't as easy as you think. Well, um, yeah. three and a half, huh? You need a rubber mold, right? Make it out of rubber mold. This is a rubber mold or hard mold. It's a rubber mold. But the problem is not making it. The problem is getting it to run true. Yeah. I was looking for my for my mold for this spinner and I can't find it. I know I know I wouldn't have thrown it out. <clears throat> you know it it's around somewhere. I just don't I cleaned up and I don't know where it is. I got Wendy's exhaust pipe molds for Spitfires, and I got his, I got his uh, wheel pant molds and all kind of crap. Hmm. What was I thinking? Uh, eventually, uh, I'm going to build that super areas, and I need to make a carbon muffler for a 40. What else did I, there's a couple of things I saw Wendy had that I wanted to get my hands on. How Why much stuff want, of Wendy's go ahead. do you have? How much stuff do, of Wendy's do you have? Just a little box full. Why do you want to build a super Aries? Because it has a wing I'm interested in. 
just the uh, USA one way. <laughs> no, it has. It actually. The ironic thing is, is me and Bill were out looking at plans at his house one day, and we had the Super Aries plans out, and we had the Geo Bolt, you know, the Thunderbolt wing out, and we we looked at the ribs. They're the same ribs, airfoil. Yeah. The difference is, is the Super Aries has a tapered trailing edge and an 11 inch cord versus a nine and three quarter cord. It, I think it's going to be a little stabler than the, than that wing or than the Razorback wing, but it'll have a, but it'll have a thicker airfoil to carry a little more, you know, airplane. I just want to try it. I did a few Vipers with uh, taper trailing edges, and they're all right, you know. I'm just trying to make a plane that flies really, really good in the wind. And one of the things I struggle with, I'm not the biggest guy in the world. And I, when it's really windy, I struggle. And everybody says that, you know, swept forward trailing edges get rid of a lot of the load. You know, well, it, it, it moves the center of pressure forward, so it makes the airplane feel more nose heavy, so it's more directionally stable, so you're going to give up some in the turn. But I lost you there. When you, move, when you move the trailing edge forward, it moves the center of pressure forward, meaning that it's going to get, feel more nose heavy. becomes more directionally stable in the wind, but you lose it in the turn. Yeah, yeah, so that it, uh, it becomes more tail heavy when you enter maneuver. So it's kind of a trade-off. Yeah. My uh, the take apart I'm doing with this medium airfoil has very little trailing edge sweep, but it has a little bit. Here, now that I got you on here and I can show you what I've been talking about, are you one of the guys that believes that the bell crank location doesn't mean anything? Um, I've never done it, so I don't really have an opinion on it. Okay, I've built hundreds of airplanes. And I've had bell cranks in all different locations. Does it does it affect the way the plane flies? Well, not exactly, but it affects the way the plane feels. And I'll show you why. And everybody's watching can can understand my theories behind this and why it feels that way. If you were to move the bell crank farther back, would the airplane feel more tail heavy or nose heavy? Probably nose heavy, right? That's right. The reason being is it's farther from the center of gravity, the fulcrum. This, the bell crank is the point of tether, not the lead outs. Everybody says it's the lead out guide. No, it's the point of tether is where the bell crank is. So if you move, move it farther forward, it, let's see, how, how, how does it work? You move it farther forward, it feels more uh, nose heavy and it becomes harder to turn, that's what it is. And farther back it becomes, let's see, I can't remember how I explained that one time. Let's see here, I I'm gonna have to think about this now. The farther back you move it, the more nose heavy it feels in the turn. And the farther forward you move it, the more tail heavy it feels in the turn. Because of the distances, that's what it is. So that's just a theory on bell crank. We've come up to the 11 o'clock hour. We blab now for an hour. Probably just cut it out. I'll, I'll probably cut off the first 15 or 20 minutes of this film. And I guess we'll let it run. But I'll be back on tomorrow night at 9. I wanted to see the Trump immigration speech tonight. So I didn't get on till 10. All right. Well, hey, good night. Hey, good night, Chris.
Good night, all. Fair winds, tight lines. See ya.